What is your freedom worth to you? Um, if you do a word study on the word freedom or on the word free, most references in the King James Bible actually refer to a slave being set free. Um, and that's really a, what it all boils down to. If you are free, you're not a slave. If you're a slave, you're not free. Pretty simple. Um, and here's the thing. Wicked men out there want to make free people into slaves. That's what's going on in our world right now. Um, when you have people telling you that you can't leave your home, that you can't drive, that you can't walk into a store without something on your face, that you can't this and you can't that, and we're going to vaccinate you whether or not you want it, you're dealing with people that are trying to make you a free man or woman into their slave. So here's a question. What is your freedom worth to you? Is it worth everything? Would you rather die a free man or woman than to be a slave to somebody? Or does it really not matter that much? Do you just kind of say, well, you know, yeah, I like being free, but you know, I don't mind these restrictions. I'm willing to give up my freedom for security. I, I'm willing to give up my rights. Um, I'm willing to give up whatever so that I can be kept safe by somebody else. I can't keep myself safe. I want somebody else to do it. Well, if that's the way you believe, then I can t say that your system of belief is very, very messed up. Okay? But I want to show you today what the Bible has to say about the subject of being free. How can you be free, truly free? Um, because, you know, who had, a, who had a, the ability to vote on this whole thing of, of forced house arrest and you can't this and you can't that? Were any of us even given a choice? No, it was forced on us. Then how do you remain free when tyrants force you into a slave enslaved position? How do you remain free? We're going to see what the Bible has to say. The book of John. You don't understand what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that a man named Jesus Christ came down here to this earth and he was actually God manifest in the flesh. And Jesus Christ taught some very revolutionary things, some things that actually got him killed. Okay? I want to show you today what he taught. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I've seen lost people that will steal the words of Jesus Christ. And they'll say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Where would you get that from? It comes from Jesus Christ. And it's ironic because in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the truth. So how can you say, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free when you don't know Jesus Christ? Think about that. I reject Jesus, but I want the truth. Not a truth, my truth, the truth. Definitive article before some oh, singular word. The truth. What is the truth? The Bible says it's Jesus Christ. So if you're a dirty, lying, stinking hypocrite out there that would steal Jesus' words and then turn around and reject Jesus Christ, may the wrath of God fall upon you. Continuing, verse 33, They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They're saying, what do you mean? We're not slaves. We're not, we're not you know, owned by somebody. But look at Jesus' response. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Hmm. Do your sins convict you? You say, well, I, I did. Do you do things that are contrary to what this book says? Contrary to what your creator, to how he wants you to live? Those things that you're ashamed of? Do you do those things? Um, you say, well, I just can't stop drinking. I know I probably should, but uh, I just can't stop. You're a servant of sin. 
you are in bondage to that drinking, to that alcohol. Well, you know, I mean, I should quit. I really should. But I just, just can't seem to quit. You're in bondage. I just can't stop cheating on my wife. I can't stop looking at pornography. I can't quit lying to people. I can't. You're in bondage. You're not free. Verse 35, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Jesus Christ is the only one that can make you free. Genuinely, truly free. Verse 37, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Does God's word have a place in your life? Do you think about this book? Do you read this book? Oh, I don't know. I, see, I, you know, I talked to a lost man one time. He said, that book makes me crazy. He was a drunkard. Servant of sin. Mm -hmm. He didn't want the son to make him free. Verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. They say, they said then, then said they to him, excuse me, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. And they're talking to God right there. Funny. They don't even know who He is. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me. Think about that. What's He saying there? He is God the Father. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but He sent me. He said, well, wait a second there. How can He be God the Father? And yet He's saying, God the Father sent me. Because God the Father is the soul. Man is made in the image of God. Body, soul, spirit. Three different parts, but one person, one being. That's what's going on there. Verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. What makes you free again? Well, that would be the truth. Do you abide in the word of God? Say, no, no, I, I don't. Then your father is the devil. Take it up with God. I didn't write this book. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Oh, you're cramming your religion down my throat. Oh, you in that book, you think that you, you worship a paper pope, you know, the Bible. Uh, you know, oh, you're a bibliolater and you're, the, yeah, you're of your father, the devil, if you don't believe in this book. You're a servant. You're a slave. I'm a free man. Why? Jesus set me free from my sinful, wicked past. I'm no longer in bondage to sin. Psalm 51. I say, well, I'm in bondage to sin. I'm living a rather miserable life right now. My life is falling apart. The whole world's falling apart. Everything's just, I don't even know what I'm going to do in the future. How does Jesus set someone free that's in that situation? Let me show you the right attitude that you need to have. The sinner psalm, we'll call it. Psalm 51 in the King James Bible. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Those wicked things that you've done, wouldn't you like to have God just blot them out, just erase it? He's written them down, writing everything you do. and just, God, could you just erase that? Give me a new start. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Do you acknowledge your transgressions? 
Do you acknowledge the sin that's always there before you? Just think about those mistakes. Maybe you can look around you and see the mistakes of your life. The empty beer bottles there. The empty packs of cigarettes. The picture of your ex-wife that left you because of your wicked lifestyle. Is your sin ever before you? Verse 4. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. God comes and he says, you're a sinner. Can you say, yes, Lord, that's, tr that's right. You're correct, Lord. I'm a sinner. I'm no good. Verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You've been a sinner since your birth, haven't you? Verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part... Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Wouldn't it be great? Sinner, to have all the dirty stuff of your past just forgiven. God come and wash you with his blood that he shed on the cross. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You can have it. It's free. You want to be free, don't you? You want the truth, don't you? I'm going to show you how to get it. Make me to hear joy and gladness, and that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Possible in the Old Testament, not possible in the New. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Free again there? Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. You want to get saved? Are you willing to praise God before other people? Verse 16, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. I'll go to church. I, I promise God, I want to get right with you. I'll go to church and I'll give 10%. He doesn't want it. He wants you. <clears throat> Verse 17. Here's the sacrifices that God's interested in. Not your money and not your church attendance and your baptism and your sacraments and whatever else. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. What does that mean? God despises your self-righteousness. God despises your church attendance. God despises your meetings and your, your secret society connections and your on the night of such and such and whatever else. God despises that stuff. God wants you to be broken. Contrite. What does that mean? That means, God, I've sinned against you and I want to correct my ways. You tell me what to do. You t tell me how to change my life. Save me, God, and I'll do whatever you tell me to do. That's contrition. Verse 18, Do good in thy good pleasure. Unto Zion build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Again, you have there in the Old Testament. But this thing shows the correct attitude of a sinner that wants to come and be set free by Jesus Christ. Now let's go to Romans chapter 5. I'm going to show you how to get the free gift so that you can be free. It's really quite simple. You want freedom? Okay. Then accept the free gift of God. Romans chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 6 through 18. I have some notes written. That's why I'm looking down here. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Are you without strength? Jesus died for you. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
you wicked, vile, disgusting man, woman, whoever you are out there. All the bad things that you've done, all the things that you're so ashamed of and you hope nobody ever finds out and people have found some things out and they're just, oh, I can't believe it. And they separate you from their company and whatever else. Jesus died for all of it. He can blot it all out. He can take it all away, give you a fresh start. And then you're free. You no longer have to be in bondage to your sin. Verse 9. <clears throat> much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Did you know that if you're not saved, you're an enemy of God? <laughs> That's not a good thought. Your creator is your enemy. When you get saved, now you're free. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Adam was the first man. He sinned, and now it just goes down through. You sin because your father sinned. A lot of times you get into alcohol because your dad was an alcoholic. You get into watching pornographic stuff because your dad had that stuff. Sin is passed from generation to generation. You have to get to a point you can't say, well, I'm a generational drunkard. I'm a generational pervert. I'm a generational... No, you, you have to come to God and say, please save me. Verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift, free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death but reign by one, talking about Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Your problem is your ancestry going back through. You're a sinner inherited through all of that. But the free gift comes through Jesus Christ. That's what it's saying there. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. It's a free gift. You want to be made free? You say, yeah, I'll do anything. You know, how much is it going to cost me? Uh, nothing. It's free. Well, don't I have to go to some holy city and, and you know, say rosaries while I'm crawling up steps on my knees? No, no, that's not free. Don't I have to go to my local church in the area and give 10% of my tithe? That's not free. You understand what I'm saying? It's a free gift that you can get. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. That's for saved people. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. If you get saved, you're no longer a servant of sin. You are no, no longer enslaved to sin. All right? And understand, you know, the original content of this whole study, what is your freedom worth to you? See, if you're of the world, the world's going to control you. You can't ever really truly be free. Because there's sins out there that are going to get you pulled into that world system, you see. But you get saved, you're now free. You're a free man or a free woman, but you're also free from that bondage of sin. That's what's going on there. Um, but it's not, you know, well, I'm just going to get saved and then I can just go on living in sin and whatever else. That's also important. No, you don't want to do that because that's what you're in bondage with right now. Verse 16, 
Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Do you want to be a servant of righteousness? If you say yes to that, well then you can be free. If you want to be controlled by sin, then uh, you'll never be free. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Okay, if you're a servant of sin, well, you don't have to worry about righteousness. What's the point? <laughs> Why clean up your life, you know? They just fall into other things. Verse 21, What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. You know that. You mess around with sin, the end of those things is death. It just gets worse and worse and worse. If you're a slave to something, like alcohol or cigarettes or uh, perversion of any kind, it just gets worse and worse with time. Um... Verse 22, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, and finally Romans chapter 10. You say, how do I get this gift? Okay, I'm really interested now. I don't like the way that the world is going. I, I really am scared for things in the future. My life is a wreck right now. I get it. I've, I've messed up. God is real. The Bible's true. I'm a sinner. I am a slave to this sin. I need help. How do I get that? Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood. He was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead. He's not like other leaders of other false religions out there that die and they're buried and people go visit their grave. Jesus Christ doesn't have a grave. Okay? He died, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. All right? You believe that? He did that to pay for your sins, so that you could be free. You say, well, I, yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that this book is true. I believe that God can save me, okay? Ask Him to save you. Call upon Him to save you. Verse 11, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Well, I believe in Jesus, but I'm kind of ashamed to talk about it. Nope. And your belief is in vain simple. Verse 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Just pray and ask God the Father. Just say, God, I, my life is a wreck. Um, I've really messed up. I'm, I'm a servant of sin. Uh, I mean, come up with your own words. You don't have to say exactly what I'm saying. But, uh, God, I need to be saved. I want to be free. See, no matter what happens to me in this world, I'm still free. I still know that I have an eternity in heaven. Um, God keeps me free. And there's a lot of times I could have gotten in trouble and you know, gone to prison or whatever else, and the Lord has spared me from those times. God keeps me free, you see. He's my master, not some politician down here on the earth or some Jesuit or whatever else. No, no. God keeps me free. He's the best master to have. But you call upon him and you say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I understand I've sinned against you. I understand if you save me, it's going to mean a changed life. I don't know everything yet. I don't know what all it's going to mean. But I know I'm going to have to face my friends and my family and whatever else. I'm going to say I'm a Christian now. And I want to read the Bible and I want to, I want to tell you about Jesus saving. and Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, it means that I have to change in my life or whatever else. You tell me what to do. But God, could you please save me? Would you please 
tell me that I can be free from the bondage of this sin. I don't want to live the rest of my life in bondage to these things. They've hurt me. This alcohol has ruined my life. These cigarettes, <clears throat> I can barely breathe anymore. My perverted lifestyle has cost me marriages and relationships. My children don't want to be around me. If that's what you want, the Lord can free you. Or you can go on into the world and just can continue doing what you want, just be the servant of sin. And the government come, can come out and say, hey, you know what, you're going to give up your freedom. You're going to become our slave. What if I don't want to? Okay, then we're going to cut off your supply to those sins that you are in bondage to. Oh, okay, well, I'll just do whatever you tell me to do then. Because I don't want you to cut off my sinful life that I have. But if you're done with sin, if you say, yeah, I don't want that stuff. God, I want to be free. Tell me how to be free from the bondage of corruption. Come to him. Talk to him. Call out to the Lord. And pray. Read this book, King James Bible. Don't mess with any other one. Read the King James Version here. And ask God to show you. I want to know for sure that I'm saved. Call upon him to save you. Do it today, right now. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.